All right, good afternoon. Welcome to the virtual visit of the Hearst 2021 induction course. Um, normally, of course, we would like to show you the cavern um, in real, but um, today you have to follow just a virtual visit. Your guide underground is Laza, of course, followed by the Technica of uh, Noemi. She makes sure that everything works. And who else is underground? Mohammed. Mohammed, Maria, and Aifa. Okay, so they will go give you comments and tell you what uh, you see underground. And in case they can't talk or they are out of breath, then I jump in. And of course, questions are possible. And um, I think um, we should start. Huh? Yeah. Laza, go. Yes. I am going to start by starting. Okay. So now I'm unmuted. I am showing the people the control room that is on the surface, that is the starting point of, the, of your work in CMS and the real life. And now I'm going to go towards the elevator. We have to go into CMS Underground. All these are surface works. And as usual, the, the big issue is getting into the SAS because uh, we have to be accepted by the system that wants to check uh, whether I have all the courses, all the permissions to get in. And now it wants to check my iris. Oh, it identified me. That's usually a little bit more nervous than today. It takes a while to, to do the readout. Actually, there are so many safety features that uh, it is not surprising. It's so nervous. Here, the, the, this is the bottom of the shaft at 97 meters. And I'm going to call the lift now while my colleagues do come. So this is the surface area. This is the, the uh, area through which we let the, pass the material. So you have a kind of a, a room where you open up from once and you put the, your equipment in, you close the door, you get through the access system here iris scan and everything else. Then you open up this door and take your piece, your equipment. And- uh, Laza, may I have a technical uh, uh, message to the attendees? Yes. Um, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask. You can do it through the Q&A button on the bottom. Please don't do it in the chat. Thank you. Very well. Okay, one interesting thing is that we have so many visitors here during the year. And one of the, the issue is how, do many, how many people are there underground? So you see this little box on the surface? Visitors' helmets have RFID chips built in. So we count visitors. We are all counted by the access system that tells us uh, uh, whenever you read out uh, your dosimeter, whenever you enter in the closed area, you the system counts you. So the firemen always know. Can you? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Okay. So as you can see, there is an issue with the occupancy. We reach the maximum occupancy of the of the lift. The... I uh, guess uh, we will lose the connection for a while. It's 97 meters. Yes, um, they are out of uh, sight. And uh, they uh, uh, go down uh, the shaft and downstairs they will uh, reconnect. Just um, 
for those who are really new and have never been here, the uh, construction here on this uh, side was a bit special because we have to go through the uh, uh, water of the Jura, which is at uh, 70 meter. And that made um, building the hall a bit uh, uh, an adventure. And also this is the explanation that uh, CMS um, with this special construction, we will discuss a little bit later, goes to the smallest of the halls because um, there you will see one cannot set up the detector. It was necessary to build the detector on the surface and then bring it down in pieces um, and put it uh, back together. And uh, the reason for, for this small uh, hall is that uh, building a hall below the water um, bed of the Jura um, is particularly expensive and technically um, challenging. So what has happened, one has um, frozen out um, the ground, put the concrete in, and then uh, when the concrete was cured, um, one has uh, left it, uh, it uh, raised the temperature. So now we have them back. Very good. Not, not yet, not yet. There are technical issues to be resolved. Okay, I try to entertain the, the people during your okay. Thank rundown. You. And Thank now you. you can take over. I can take over. Okay, great. Because now we managed to reach the, the underground control room, the, the so-called counting house, the area, remember CMS has two caverns, one is service and one is collision cavern. We are in the service cavern now, where you have- uh, Also, we don't the, get picture. I'm, I'm smiling to into it. That's what scared the camera, I guess. Okay, now it's better. Okay. Okay, so. We don't hear you. You're completely out. So now they are in the uh, um, in the counting rooms. This are, is a two-story um, hall. Flies. Uh, and the first level of readout uh, system and triggering. So your data coming out of the collision hall are already digitized, but you still have to form them into proto events in so-called trigger primitives so that you can make a first level choice on uh, whether to keep events or not. So. I'm now going gently towards the collision uh, hall. Here we have a so-called uh, gas room. The gas mixtures are made on surface, but uh, here we do the quality control, uh, the last control before we, we uh, uh, do the, inject them into the chambers. Here you see the whole row of uh, fire detection equipment. Here is more safety equipment uh, than uh, devices for uh, checking uh, whether you got contaminated or not. Then this is access into the accelerator area. Usually we don't mix uh, accelerator and experiments because the, the rules are completely different for operation and access. So that's why the door is closed under alarm and we cannot uh, go in without, uh, without breaking the alarms. Breaking alarm means uh, stopping the accelerator. So is uh, another access door. So getting into collision hall is a bit more complicated than getting into the service hall, especially when the beam is on. So we go again. Again, uh, reading my dosimeter, checking my uh, access rights, uh, getting in, uh, having the, oopsie, will it read my iris? Yes, it did. Very good. Ah, I got ad admitted. Very well. So you see the zig and zag uh, structure of the, the access. Uh, here there are seven meters of reinforced concrete of a so-called pillar between the uh, two, two caverns. Why zig and zag? Because neutrons have a nasty habit of uh, going uh, through even smallest uh, passages. So giving them a maze uh, to go through a kind of a labyrinth. 
reduces the number of uh, particles that manage to go through. And uh, without, instead of waiting for everybody to go through, I'll go right into the center of the world, namely CMS Experimental Cavern. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CMS. This is the real thing, the real experiment that we spent years on working on. As you can see, there are people actually working here. This is not a computer simulation. This is a real experimental experiment in the real experimental cavern. So what you see here is the end cap of the, the experiment, work platform, and the barrel. The yellow platform is there to allow easier access to the to, to, for the people working on the, the experiment. The big uh, silver cylinder of six meters inner diameter is CMS magnet. And inside you can see the so-called bulkhead. The conical surface is uh, hadron calorimeter. The, then comes the electromagnetic calorimeter. And inside the, are, is the, thank you, Naomi. And inside is the so-called bulkhead of the tracker. Sorry about the sound effects, uh, but there is a number of uh, chains that have to be passed over a, an aluminum platform. So all the red uh, areas that you can see are parts of the magnetic yoke, the return yoke for the magnetic field. Again, the big cylinder, six meter in our diameter is the magnet of CMS that works at 3.8 Tesla that we achieve at about 18,200 and something amperes. Uh, the, all the elements of CMS, all 15 of them, all the 15 big elements of CMS got lowered through the shaft. There are two shafts uh, getting in, into CMS underground. This one is uh, closed during the accelerator operation. And uh, what is interesting is uh, when you look at the sizes, size of the shaft and the size of the experiment, you discover that there was very small margin for passage of the elements through the shaft. So you can see here, this was the clearance if you can manage to see my hand, let me see if I no. Yes. So this is the clearance we had on both ends uh, of every element going through because the edge of the gallery coincides with the edge of the of the shaft. So lowering things was a very delicate and very nerve wracking uh, procedure. So let me get you on top of the experiment. Now I'm going to on top of the so-called block house, which is a big concrete structure, housing support structure for the rotating shielding, fixed iron nose, and other elements that are we use to protect the machine itself, namely the focusing triplets, focusing quadrupoles right uh, behind uh, this wall. that are superconducting and therefore sensitive to deposited energy. And another view into the pit. And now we will go downstairs. 
And uh, Wolfram, you can take over for a minute or two while I'm uh, walking down. Yes, okay. So I see here a few questions uh, were raised concerning the, uh, concerning the access to this uh, to the hall um, uh, during the operation of the um, accelerator for radiation protection reasons, the, the hall is blocked. Um, uh, so we uh, and after the accelerator stopped, it takes about a half an hour and then we have access uh, again uh, and then the short lift all short lift activation has been deca has decayed and the air has been exchanged a few times. So then uh, uh, one can uh, get in without any danger. There was another question um, uh, concerning why or whether um, a, a standard or average uh, CMS physicist works in the hall. And this is a bit, it depends on. Um, uh, most of the institutes also contribute to the hardware. And if you are in the crew who is responsible for some parts of the hardware, then of course um, you are expected also to work um, uh, in the cavern. Um, just to give you a picture, um, normally when we are working during the shutdown, really full steam, not now Friday afternoon uh, around three o'clock, then we have up to 40, 50 people um, oh, yeah. uh, in the hall working. Of course, um, out of a collaboration of uh, more than 2000 people, this is a small fraction, but I think our philosophy is in principle that every high energy physicist should have at least once also worked on something from the hardware. So I personally think it is good if uh, a physicist at least knows where the data he is analyzing coming from. And also have had at least for a while his or her hands on something which uh, really is uh, part of the detector. Okay, so sorry about the, the delay, but uh, uh, I don't want to go through the work area because as you can see, the, the crane is in, in operation. Yes, so shall I, I quickly have... say what, what we are doing go, there? Go, why, go. Um, the crane is uh, there in operation because we are now um, opening the detector. So the, uh, the end cap disks were previously close to the uh, to the barrel and to the magnet they are pushed back and now we are installing big platforms between the barrel and the end cap to uh, install the beam pipe yeah as if you look at the um, at the detector you might ask yourself well, where is the beam going uh, you can't see it at this stage because at the beginning of the shutdown we have removed the beam pipe which is very fragile um, uh, to be certain that we don't damage it and also to make space for a new one. We get now a new one, which is already for the next phase of uh, LHC uh, there. And uh, for the installation, we have to open the detector completely and have to put in platforms. On one end, you see the platform already in place. And on the other end, where they are still working, we put the support piece and then the same yellow platform comes on top of it um, after this has been installed and properly aligned. Yeah, and see here you see a very nice uh, view of the inner area of the barrel. So the magnet, the hadron calorimeter face, the face of the electromagnetic calorimeter, and the bulkhead of the tracker. Yes, the bulkhead you see dark part where you see the uh, the little nose coming out. There, in the beam pipe go is going through. Okay. Sorry about the delays, but uh, this is an industrial site and we have to follow the rules of uh, industry. So nobody walks under a suspended load. We all wear safety shoes. We all wear hard hats. We all pay attention where we put our feet or, or little fingers or even big fingers. And uh, so here we are at the bottom of the, the cavern. The view That's is that. beautiful, yes. Uh, sorry for interrupting. We just got a question about how the end cap is moved. Perfect uh, question because we are right next to the end cap. Yes, show yes. the feet. So, show the feet and the air pads. So we are right next to the end cap. These are the feet of the end cap. 
And these orange devices are so-called air pads. So when you move ant cap that is about 1500 tons, you pump uh, 24 atmosphere of air into this, uh, these pipes attached to the disc and you create a nice little air pad that uh, allows your element to slide over the floor very smoothly. Now, what you should never forget is that this monster is 1,500 tons and there are a couple of hundred tons sticking out so that the whole thing wobbles. There are a couple of centimeter wobble when you move things and that's why you have to do it very gently. The first and disc is 60 centimeters thick and it still wobbles. Yes. As you can see here the thickness of the elements, of the support elements. And here you can even see that there are actually three chariots, three carts that allow the, the, for three different discs to be moved around. Now, you see lots of cables, fibers, and so on, and pipes. Well, you cannot uh, have uh, five megawatts of electric power consumed in the experiment without cooling it. So that's where the pipes come from. You have to cool it. Power, you need a high voltage, low voltage. You need controls. Everything has to be perfectly synchronized with the beam and with collisions. So all those signals have to go in and the data have to come out. There are thousands of cables. There are thousands of, uh, of pipes. And uh, one of the challenges is not to, to discover, to find out which uh, fiber or cable is broken or disconnected. The challenge is actually, actually to find out uh, if uh, there, are, there are two fibers swapped or two cables swapped. Now, I keep telling you about 97 meters depth. But actually, it's not true. It's, uh, we have two floors more below the experiment to route all the cables and uh, cooling pipes under the, under the floor and through the, through the passages and through under the wall between two caverns and into the service cavern that is uh, seven meters uh, uh, further behind this wall. Now, not all uh, cables go through this uh, long path that makes it more than 100 or 120 actually meters long. Why? Because we want uh, signals very fast. So there are passages for short uh, cables and fibers that we use for above all for trigger signals and they go through the wall here. You see that it's all painted, all messed up with the foam. Why? Well, you don't want the air from the experimental cavern to end up in the service cavern because it may be radioactive. So there is a pressure difference between service cavern and the experimental hall. The same way there is a pressure difference between the, the experimental hall and the accelerator. So what you can see here is the access to the second shaft. This shaft that you see in the background is closed with a big tower of concrete blocks that you see in the background during the operation. But that allows us access to the service cavern even when the beam is on. And now I will exit the cavern through the second door. So we can access the cavern through two doors on two different levels. And here, yes, yeah, another, another view of a nice air pad. The, the nice view of the winching system that we use for moving the elements of, the, the, of CMS uh, around. You know, lifting things on air pads is not enough. You still have to pull it somehow. But that's, this is outdated. We have a better thing uh, being validated right now. Okay, and another zigzag tunnel and another uh, uh, Lazarus particles. 
yes. before you would go out. Uh, is there any question concerning any specific place in the experimental cavern that you want to see? I mean, the attendees. If you have, could you please submit it in the Q and A? There is no coffee machine underground. No eating, drinking, dancing, or or having fun underground. It just work. Yeah. So I cannot show you a coffee machine or a TV room. That's all on surface. And interesting thing, yes. Are people afraid to work underground? No, we are always in contact. You see this thing? This is leaky feeder cable. So your telephone connection with Swisscom is much better right now because I'm 10 centimeters from the from the antenna than on on surface. Question, Sultan. So we don't get anything uh, special. So I wouldn't uh, stop you. I well, guess. maybe I the, the H curl. Yeah, yeah, where's the H curl? So the H curl is inside the magnet. The magnet is the uh, the structure, okay. the ripped uh, um, wheel, which you can see. Maybe we go back quickly. Okay, yes. there are, there are two thousand tons of H curl. So uh, yes, uh, uh, is enough. So, but maybe you go. There's to plenty the of it. So. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you so, see here, you see here. Uh, Loza can cylinder. show it with his finger where the well, H curl barrel is. Well, it's uh, yeah, that's that's the H curl barrel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, easy. So you see the cylinder part of about meter and a half. That's the inner face of the of the uh, cryostat of the magnet. Then comes conical part, sloping inwards. That's the front face of the hadron barrel calorimeter. Then there comes another almost cylindrical part, which is a surface of the inner surface of the barrel hadron calorimeter. Then comes another conical part, and that's the face of the sorry, of the electromagnetic calorimeter. Yep. Here, there is an end cap. So the first disk you can see to the right. Uh, oopsie. Uh, yeah, two big fingers. First 10, 15 centimeters uh, is, no, no, it's my fingers that are too thick. Thanks for trying. But uh, the first uh, 10, oh, sorry, 15, 20 centimeters is pre shower. Then the conical part is the electromagnetic calorimeter and cap. Then comes conical and cylindrical part. That's the end cap hadron calorimeter. DC and then come uh, ME chambers, ME11 chambers. So these are muon chambers, cathode strip chambers, and so on. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, uh, Noemi reminds me greatly <coughs> to remind the people that we work with magnetic field here. The field is pretty strong, uh, and uh, there is always a bit of remnant uh, activity. Remnant magnetic field. So, if I manage to do it without shaking my hands too much, okay. Here you may be able to see paper clips standing peacefully on the edge of the cart, moving uh, the moving the the end cap around. There is remnant activity, so uh, remnant sorry, remnant magnetic field. So no. Visitors with pacemakers allowed in the uh, in the, the cavern. Next question. No, not yet. Uh, so there was a question concerning the the people there. Yes. Uh, what are the crew? Yes, I think I answered that. Um, they are the crew is working on the installation of these platforms, and. So the uh, then uh, I don't know. Now that's probably end of the day. I don't know. Then they are we do some service on uh, on chambers. Um. Now the uh, what I see what I see is uh, crew working on the platform. Yeah, it's a platform. Yeah, exactly. 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 So it's a platform installation, um, uh, which is uh, now today the big program. Yeah. Um, and it is uh, rather touchy. This is a, a, a twenty ton platform which has to go in. Uh, and has to be aligned rather properly. Um, also, what is important, maybe 
just one more remark to the moving system. Um, the hall is inclined. So from the site where um, uh, you entered, um, this is the lowest part underneath the shaft, um, to, uh, up to the other side, it, uh, <clears throat> we have an inclination of 1.2 degrees. Um, uh, and that also has a consequence for the way we are opening the detector. If we open the detector on the side underneath the shaft, um, it means we go downhill. And if you have uh, these air pads and the thing is sliding, you need something which breaks it. Otherwise, it goes against the wall. Uh -huh. um, uh, and uh, uh, vice versa, if we uh, want to close on this end, um, uh, we have to go uphill. So you have to have a hydraulics which uh, can move the thing a little bit uphill. And just to clarify for people wondering how stupid can people be, no, it's the entire accelerator that has a tilt. It's not CMS uh, uh, construction crew that uh, messed uh, things up. No, no, the entire accelerator is tilted. And this, so, uh, yeah, and the reason for that is that the, uh, we need a stable um, layer for this. We are living here in an earthquake area, and the first stable layer is the molasse, um, uh, which is uh, um, a uh, stone similar of uh, uh, the stone of the Jura. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when the when the earth was made it was not made for building an accelerator there therefore um, then nobody took care of uh, making it really flat so it is inclined and the decision um, had to be made um, uh, how one sets up an accelerator in that it had to be inclined and so we decided to go parallel to the accelerator and not having an angle in the, uh, with the with the detector with respect to the accelerator and that, that explains to newcomers to CERN why CERN has such a mad uh, structure, completely elaborate, because it is built around accelerators, yes. not for the convenience of visitors, but for the convenience of beams to pass through. Now, we are exiting through another door, and we will let the, the gentleman get again pass through. <laughs> Yes, okay. And here we go again. Yes. Uh -oh. And here is a bit more of uh, safety equipment. Checking for checking for contamination. Yeah, things are more complicated now that we have uh, uh, the COVID. So masks, uh, hydrogel all over the place. Actually, it's pure fun when uh, you have to make an intervention uh, uh, during the run because magnet takes several hours to turn on, and even the so-called fast the charge takes twenty minutes. So you don't turn on and off magnet easily meaning that you have to walk into the cavern while the magnet is on, which makes things uh, very interesting because uh, the cheap safety shoes that uh, most of us have are actually made of uh, ma magnetic stainless steel. So the, you, you walk like Godzilla because you get uh, stuck to the floor whenever you make a, a step. There's a reason why we avoid anything uh, that has magnetic, uh, uh, magnet uh, magnetic materials in it. We even have a toolbox made of brass. So your hammers, pliers, screwdrivers are made, all made of brass. And it seems that we are still connected. Yes. Very good. On the way up, probably you will stay connected. Very good. So. So as you can see, usually, usually it's just me and me, but there are three students learning how to how to give the, the spiel during virtual visits. It's actually fun, unless you're uh, unfit and you and you have to catch breath while talking and walking and climbing and so on. <laughs> okay, so the ride is actually fairly quick. It's the first floor going between zero and the first floor or vice versa, that is the long one. That's more than 80 meters, one floor. The other ones are, are shorter. Still 97 meters is pretty deep. Uh, the point four 
X aleph experiment nowadays place where we have uh, RF cavities accelerating the beam is the deepest. It's about 140 meters uh, depth. It's not just the accelerator. It's, uh, there are also slopes of the of Jura Mountain. So uh, you have to take geography into account. And now do I have? Uh, yes, I still have my dosimeter. There we go. Yeah, so you see the system is very nervous because you have to step in. Uh, round joystick. So you have to, re for exiting, you have to read your dosimeter. You don't have to read your iris. But you still have to, to step exactly on the yellow square. You sh cannot dance on it. You cannot have a, 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 your lanyard flying around or a, or a toolbox uh, that cuts the, the four, four light beams uh, <coughs> several times. Otherwise, system imagines that uh, there are a couple of two people trying to get in and out, and that they definitely don't like. So it refuses opening. And going back into the control room. Enjoy the view because uh, we hope that in a couple of years we will uh, replace this with uh, something uh, bigger, better, nicer. Oh, yes. Uh, can we? You mentioned five megawatts of power. Uh, yeah, Raza, I think you are disconnected. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> That's opinion. So. Good. Um, okay. There are quite a few questions. I tried to hack a little bit. Um, so, but let me just ask Elasa, what is the background radiation in the cover now during shutdown? Um, it is um, very low in some parts, depending on where you are. Um, uh, if you are just on the ground floor, it is uh, just uh, uh, above the uh, the radiation which we have uh, on the surface, uh, the background. If you go close to the beam line, then it can increase. And uh, the hottest part is uh, close to uh, the beam line at the, at the end cap. Um, there we have uh, um, up to millisieverts uh, per hour uh, radiation still, and, um, and therefore, these areas are always blocked. At the moment, they are covered by the end cap. Um, this is the point where the, the beam comes out of the um, uh, out of the tunnel and enters uh, into the hall. There, it's really hot. Um, but most of the areas, it is not. You um, have to wear a dosimeter to just uh, control. So we call the the areas for those who work a little bit in radiation protection. It's a supervised area. And uh, if we go closer to the uh, to the beam line. Um, then it can, becomes uh, uh, what we call a controlled or limited stay area. So, Laza is back. Are there more questions? Now you can also ask them. Is the pressure of air higher in the cavern compared to the control room? Um, the, nice. um, we have a little um, overpressure with respect to the other cavern. And the reason for that is that um, and we have an uh, we have an under pressure with respect to the tunnel. So the uh, and the the reason no we have an under pressure. No, also, we, uh, yes, sorry. Start. Let's start from scratch. <laughs> the lowest pressure we have is uh, in the service cavern. Um, uh, to yeah. have no, the, highest pressure pressure. In, the highest pressure. The highest pressure is the service cavern, cavern which have, is on on on, uh, on normal, normal pressure. pressure. And we have this, the uh, detector cavern. Uh, a little bit lower pressure so that radioactivity from the uh, detector cavern does not is not transported to the uh, um, service cavern which is not a controlled area which is completely free of any um, uh, radiation classification and the same we have again between the tunnel and the uh, the detector cavern so the pressure in the tunnel is lower than the pressure in the detector cavern to avoid radioactivity 
which uh, is uh, um, produced in the tunnel, which is much higher than uh, the one which is produced in our cavern, mm -hmm. is entering into the detector cavern. It's rather the dust. Yes, it's the dust and uh, um, activated material, and also the uh, the air the airflow is going always in the other direction. But still, still. It's all minor when compared with a nuclear power plant. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> we, we are obliged to follow the letter of the law because uh, we have to follow the law. Yes. But, uh, but uh, danger wise, uh, the bigger danger is to trip and, uh, and fall uh, uh, than, uh, than to get irradiated around here. Yeah, but, but we have, you have to take quite a bit of care. So the uh, cavern is not accessible. I said this also in the, in the chat. Um, uh, during uh, operation for radiation protection reasons, because um, then um, if the accelerator is running, there are areas in the also in the detector cavern which are not healthy to be in. Um, so, give us more questions. Oh, I don't know how we are on time. Well, we have five minutes. Actually, we have uh, seven minutes before the next visit starts. Okay, so I think we can we can answer a couple of one or two more questions. So please feel free. No open questions. Okay, every everything, everything seems to be clear. So then I think we can wrap up. Then we wrap up, and people can start tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, working downstairs. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, guys, thanks for visiting. Come again, uh, especially there, there are shifts to do here. And we are getting ready for the beams, and Andre, beams are um, coming in September. Has so. we been accurate? Uh, yes. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, that was... This is uh, relatively uh, frequent. We are in an air, uh, earthquake area, but um, all of the uh, detector parts and pieces have to be uh, had to be designed that they can withstand an earthquake i think up to uh, five or five. six five is the, the maximum we are expected in every, yes every one in three hundred in three in three hundred years not, not one thousand no three hundred no, three hundred yes so we have um typically the things are one two three um of, on the on the richter scale what we have here um but we had a few and uh, the uh, the detector had had no problem with that and um, also, of course, if we build uh, here buildings, even simple huts, um, they have to be earthquake uh, protected, and this makes it also a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. But safe. Okay. Yes. The last question is the, the water leaks, because in the, the meantime, we got, we got a chat message that uh, at uh, 15 hour 30, you will have to reconnect the original Zoom conference room. Um, whatever, what water leaks are we are talking about um well we had water leaks quite massive ones um a hundred liter of water running from uh, the uh, um, upper uh, plus uh, end um, with the uh, slope of the hall through the entire detector coming out on the uh, lower uh, lower end on the other side um because of uh, um, a very simple uh, connection um had a problem with the brass was a production problem with the brass um Fortunately, um, we have recognized it quickly, could switch off. We dried the detector for four days and then we continued. And of course the circuit was, uh, was blocked. And then we had uh, um, again, the modular structure of the detector allowed us over a Christmas uh, break to open it and to exchange 440 of these things all over the detector. It was a big fun. Um, some families broke up, I guess, because of that, because uh, there was quite a bit of work. But in the end, uh, in uh, early March, the detector was running again when uh, the machine came back. Yeah. And water, but water um, leaks are really uh, one of our biggest fears because they can, of course, make severe damage. So the, the quality control and uh, the uh, um, the detection water leak detection is rather sophisticated here and we try also to put uh, shims everywhere in to guide the water in in case in particular the vac tank that it is so uh, covered um, is uh, also to protect it from um, water we had in quite frequently water leaks in the end cup 
And uh, also just before we close, we put water guiding systems so that all water which uh, uh, could uh, spill over is guided in a controlled way out of, the, out of the detector without hitting any electrical part. That's the important thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Wolfram. I think we have to stop here. We have to stop here because we have to give the attendees to reconnect the original Zoom room. Yes. Please don't forget to reconnect there. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very for much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Come again.